Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and joining me today is Eric Kang. Hey, Eric. Hi, Robert. How are you doing? Hey, good. Pretty good. Eric's here to continue our series on data. Uh, you guys may have noticed that we're doing uh, several episodes on data. I did a, an episode with Scott Klein a couple months ago to talk about what's new in data for developers. Mm -hmm. We kind of focused on the cloud stuff, a lot of what's going on in Azure, touched a little bit on, on SQL. Um, we did an episode a little bit back with Dimitri and yep. Kevin Kinane. 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 See, I wasn't here to ask him how to pronounce his name. <laughs> Kevin Kinane on the SQL Server data tools, um, which run inside Visual Studio. Yes. And you're going to show us um, how you can do SQL Server from inside Visual Studio code yes. uh, in a kind of cross-platform manner. Exactly. Um, and then we have another episode that we're going to do. And I'm not sure if this one's going to be before that one or that one's before this one. Um, so don't don't hold me to the order, but we'll do an, uh, another episode on it's going to be SQL Server and connectors, which is how you can talk to SQL Server from additional languages that you would be doing for inside Visual Studio or, or Code, like PHP, Node, etc. Yeah, right. Node.js, uh, yeah. JDBC, all that matter. So right. I want to actually show this one. Uh -huh. So this is the one thing that you should remember as a developer, aka.ms. A SQL Dev. All right. So this site actually has all the you know uh, the the getting started and mm -hmm. the building your app with a SQL Server with Node.js, PHP, all that matter there. Right. And also it has the uh, the the cross links for the useful docs and then the tools site. Yep. So uh, this is the uh, the the URL. Cool. cool. That you and there's need to just amazingly cool stuff going on in SQL Server. You know, uh, some people might be back from the world from a few years back where you know you just talked to SQL Server, it's just sitting mm -hmm. on some server somewhere, it was databases, you just put a connection to it, you had yeah. data in there, and you never really cared what version was running there. Is it running on you know Windows, which mm -hmm. version of server, who cares? Because right. you're just talking to SQL Server. Right. But those days are kind of long gone now. <laughs> There's an awful lot <laughs> more that's been going on. Um, and the types of apps we're building are very, very different. We've yep. got SQL Server running on Linux. We've got the ability to talk to SQL Server from multiple languages on mm -hmm. multiple platforms from multiple tools. Right. And, and so we're trying to give everybody a really good grounding in that on this show. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we are all on the developer focus. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. So with that, you can understand why we have a SQL Dev, Dev site. Right. And we talk about those uh, PHP, yep. JDBC, Node.js. Now you can understand that we focus on the developers. Right. And we want them to develop their apps with a SQL Server. Cool. Yes. All right. So talk to us about Visual Studio Code. OK, so uh, let's switch to um, uh, the slide that I uh, prepared. OK. So today's session, we are going to talk about the SQL Server vNext. The vNext runs on Linux, Mac OS with a Docker container, and Windows equally everywhere. Okay. And uh, so when you say V next, do you mean it hasn't shipped yet? Oh, it hasn't shipped yet. It's right now in uh, November 16 uh, with a connect event, mm -hmm. we released the CDP1 public preview. Okay. All right. Yes. So that's the stage. Got it. And the uh, MS SQL extension for Visual Studio Code is the, uh, the main topic that we're going to talk about mm -hmm. as a tooling perspective. Uh, Visual Studio Code, as you know, it is a light uh, weight editor based uh, the developer tool, yep. which is very popular in the developer community, right? right? And then yep. another, you know, uh, the usage is like a full-featured ID perspective like a Visual Studio. So right. it's kind of a choice for the developer. Yep. It's about the workflow. Some people, exactly. and I, I'm in that group, like the yep. fully-featured workflow that happens all inside the IDE. Exactly. I love wizards. I love right. things that write my code for me. I don't, right. don't want to have to drop down <laughs> to the command prompt, and I, I don't even want to have yep. to go out to, you know, outside of Visual Studio to be mm -hmm. typing. That's just me. There right. are others who like more of a, a less integrated workflow. They do mm -hmm. the exact same amount of work, of exactly. course, talk to the exact same things, um, but do it more from a command-based, uh, mixing and matching various tools. Right. That's what Visual Studio Code right. is for. So one thing that I read from a, a blog on the internet is that um, excellent <coughs> editor plus a great runtime to run your app mm -hmm. is what developer needs. Mm -hmm. Right. So that makes sense. So yep. Visual Studio Code fits in yep. that uh, bucket. Very well. And uh, when you build an application, and uh, there is a uh, app, uh, the data for application, right? And uh, you have a choice uh, mm -hmm. for storing the data and processing the data. 
SQL Server is one uh, great uh, the choice that you can store your application data and the process, uh, do the data processing. Right. And uh, it's part of your application, basically. And mm -hmm. uh, when you build your application using a VS Code or Visual Studio, then you need to be able to uh, have a equivalent solution for your database part. Right. So MS SQL extension comes in that picture. Okay, and this is uh, this is avail this is one of the Visual Studio Code extensions it is. available. It's been yes. out for a while. We released the the preview version, public preview, on November 16. Okay. So November 16 was the big uh, launching Connect. day. Yep. SQL uh, uh, VNX, SQL yep. Server VNX that runs on everywhere, and uh, we released MS SQL extension that runs on VS Code uh, that runs on the Mac, Linux, okay. and Windows, and we also released the command line tools that you can uh, use it to run uh, the routine task in script, like a bash script, mm -hmm. or you can automate it use, uh, for the task, or you can also uh, SS, SSH in, like a terminal in, to uh, uh, the machine that uh, runs your server mm. and run command. Right? So that's basically kind of a whole portfolio and picture in tools perspective, how right. we can help developers and admins to, yeah. you know, uh, use our tools to to develop their apps. See, I, and I, use I it. hear yeah. that, and I go, well, why wouldn't I just use SQL Server Management Studio? Oh, that <laughs> SQL Server Management <laughs> Studio is also a uh, great. Just on, on same day, yeah. we released the SQL Server Management Studio version 17.0. Mm -hmm. We uh, the we version bumped from 16.0 to 17. That uh, distinguishes the uh, uh, or signifies that that version starts supporting SQL Server Vnext. Ah, okay. so. Uh, the key thing is that uh, even though you're using Windows to uh, manage or develop your application, it doesn't matter. Independently, you can run SQL Server on Mac, Linux, and Windows, right? Right. So SSMS has the capability to connect and run your uh, task mm -hmm. on any SQL Server platform and version uh, that matter. Uh, equally, SQL Server data tools that Kevin and Dimitri did a presentation uh, in the previous uh, session. Mm -hmm. That has also version 17.0 released, and it supports SQL Server, VNX, everywhere. Cool. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. So uh, just to, you know, quickly repeating, the focus of our team is we really want to help our user to develop with SQL Server, uh, Azure SQL Database, mm -hmm. and Azure, uh, Azure SQL Data Warehouse anywhere. Right. In a, a simple and very productive way. So whenever we design our product uh, in tools side, the key thing is like it has to be simple, and it has to be productive. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a key principle that we always uh, think in our uh, team. So to do that, um, there is a, the two things, two important things to deliver. One is the SQL Server should run on Mac, Linux, and Windows, right? Yeah. So that was one, and the other one is that as we uh, just briefly uh, talked about. The developer's tool should run on those multi OS right. independently from uh, where your, wherever your SQL Server is running. Right? So, so the answer to the question on November 16, we released the SQL tools portfolio uh, with MS SQL extension and cross platform support for those uh, command line interfaces mm -hmm. and all that. So now we have uh, many choices as a developer, right? right? Cool. So, I just to summarize it. And um, the way that we look at it here is that, uh, like this. You're a developer. I want to develop my application and database on, let's say, Linux and Mac. Oh, go use MS SQL extension of Visual Studio Code. Mm -hmm. That's your choice. It's, it's great. It's uh, lightweight, but it provides the, uh, the must-have features, like a connect to SQL Server, okay. write to SQL uh, code with IntelliSense and beautiful language service there, right. and uh, execute and view result. Cool. That's the core. Let's see it. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> let's take a look at it, and uh, I'm going to uh, go. So let's switch to the demo then, that case, yeah. right? So uh, for this demo, I'm going to use a um, the sample database that we have published in the GitHub SQL Server samples. Mm -hmm. This is the uh, the samples uh, GitHub repository. You can go and the clone. Just uh, do copy and run um, a git clone and okay. uh, paste this uh, URL. Then we'll pull down all the SQL Server samples to your uh, Mac, let's say. Okay. And once you do that, 
and uh, let's go to VS Code. The first step is that uh, I already uh, pulled down those uh, uh, projects, which is called the Belgrade Product Catalog Database. The main reason is Belgrade is that we have a team in Serbia, uh -huh. Belgrade, okay. and uh, the Joban in the team actually made this uh, uh, the, uh, the application. What it does is that basically uh, it is an ASP.NET Core application with uh, using jQuery to, to query the uh, SQL Server. Okay. And uh, it shows uh, the, the new feature like uh, the JSON data and function support. Nowadays, all the data handling is JSON format mm -hmm. nowadays, yep. right? So uh, SQL Server has a built-in feature to support JSON uh, data and then uh, the processing feature. So mm -hmm. it demonstrates that one and temporal table. Have you heard about the temporal table? I've uh, heard it, okay, great. the term, but it's just oh, I refresh. See. I see. Temporal is more like, for example, if you're uh, working in uh, like a ERP solution, mm -hmm. that means a history of employee history, employee, right? That's very important so that, uh, you know, we can always look at, okay, the, uh, the person was in this job position, but in next year, he mm -hmm. got promoted. So uh, he became like a CEO of the company then there is always history information for that right. one. If you do like online uh, the, 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 the sales, online sales, uh, uh, the web application, then you have a product mm -hmm. and you should have a list of product and history and you want to see what has happened in your business and all that kind of stuff. So historical data is very important. Right. And uh, if you try to build that logic in your application, it can be pretty complex. But using SQL Server, temporal table, is uh, uh, doing the, the versioning of your data automatically by simply mm -hmm. just to set the system versioning flag on your table and link up to your main table and the system table. So it's a pretty cool feature. So yeah. the demo shows that one and the uh, uh, security features like dynamic da uh, data masking and the row level security. Mm -hmm. Those are also uh, the, the features that if you want to build in your application using your app uh, logic, Pretty complex, but the SQL Server uh, that supports that feature right. uh, just out of box. So, uh, cool. so this demo actually uh, shows those one. So let's quickly take a look at the uh, the app and then uh, jump into data side, okay. right? So that right. Uh, if we don't do that, then uh, the developers would uh, feel like, oh, uh, too much data, yeah. <laughs> as you say at the beginning. <laughs> so uh, I will just you know entertain you a uh, uh, beginning uh, a little bit at the beginning. So I already uh, downloaded it, and um, if you go to uh, integrated terminal. VS Code has uh, all nice features, like uh, it can uh, run command within the VS Code. Mm -hmm. So uh, for it, it is .NET application, as I said. So you can do .NET restore and build mm -hmm. and run. Then it will run your application. So it's that simple. Uh, I just did, uh, did the .NET run because I already uh, did the restore and build. Okay. And uh, let's go to our website, which is this one. So let me make sure it is running. Yeah, it's running. Okay. So this is a current, uh, it's a simple application that shows all your products mm -hmm. and uh, the companies, right? And what it does is that, look at it, if I click this time slider, it shows you the mm -hmm. data in the past, right? This is temporal tables usage, mm -hmm. right? Cool. It's so uh, nice but it's so simple to implement using SQL Server mm -hmm. instead of you just spend uh, you know, many, many hours to implement, it, implement right. this logic in your application. So this is our demo. And um, let's go back to our uh, VS Code project. So to, okay, let me uh, close it. To build and um, uh, kind of work with a SQL Server, you need two extensions in the Visual Studio Code. Uh, one is a C Sharp extension and the other one is MS SQL extension. Right now we have uh, over 9,500 uh, downloads. We have released in the, uh, the November 16. So uh, thank you very much for everyone yeah. who <laughs> downloaded and uh, started using. Yeah, oh, it's our pop-up. We don't need to be reminded, we're here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so uh, so that's, uh, that's great. So our team is really excited that uh, you know, people are uh, finding our tool mm -hmm. useful for their day-to-day uh, -day development work. So uh, Ooh, right. we'll keep T going. SQL scripts with IntelliSense. Ooh, that might a that would actually be faster and potentially more lightweight than using SQL Server Management Studio. If I just want to run some simple queries and see results. Yep. No, that's what I'm saying. All right. We are not recommending one or the other. Yeah. Now it is your choice. Now you well, have full I, power to choose. If I just one. want to look at a C sharp file on the 
on the disk, yes. I will load it in Visual Studio Code. Because I just want to look at the code, it comes up much faster. So right. even if you don't do your main development mm -hmm. in Visual Studio Code, it's a really handy utility to have yep. for times when you want to do things uh, a bit faster. Actually, uh, uh, it can be anything. It can actually uh, uh, be used as a notepad, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So I don't. Uh, There's a Markdown extension. Yes. So, so if you have to do Markdown, <laughs> I think it's your Markdown editor of choice. Exactly. Yeah. And then the, for any anything like a taking the the text note, mm -hmm. I use VS Code. Right. And for literally anything, I use you know VS Code nowadays. Yep. So it's great. And even our uh, the the usual education team who's producing the uh, the documentations, mm -hmm. they use VS Code. Yeah. Cool. So that's great. And um, the, it's a simple. Uh, just to go to search box in Visual Studio and type in MS SQL. Mm -hmm. Then you will see that, that there are two extensions. A VS Code dash MS SQL is deprecated. Okay. So this one is a Sanjay Nagamagalam, is one of our PM in our team, and who actually made the prototype of uh, okay. MS SQL extension. And uh, uh, we made the, the, the official version, MS SQL, which is the Got second it. one. Yep. So go install this one instead of okay. a VS Code MS SQL. We are going to Unpublished VS Code uh, uh, dash MS SQL. Sometimes we just left right. it to have a, like a transition. Okay. All right. So those are two extensions that you need. Okay. So let's get to the uh, real business, right? <laughs> so if you go to the uh, the folder Belgrade Product Catalog Demo, um, uh, there is a set of scripts that you can help. So if you're an application developer, you focus on the building, let's say, uh, the net core. ASP.NET coding and writing code mm -hmm. for jQuery. But to test your application, you need to prepare your you know, SQL Server instance and database, all that uh, kind of stuff. So, so these are kind of uh, the, the, the SQL scripts okay. that set up your application database uh, for, so that you can test it. Oh, one thing important is that as you see, I'm running everything on my Mac. Mm -hmm. Right. One of the key uh, the user scenario that I want to uh, point out before we continue is that um, there is a need for developers to do things all on locally. For example, if you're using Mac, mm -hmm. then uh, you should be able to develop your application, develop your database, and be able to test it. Right. After that is all done. You can uh, you know, choose your like a production environment. It can be uh, Azure SQL database or any cloud or mm -hmm. Windows, Linux. But you should be able to work your day-to-day -day job in Starbucks as well. Right. So, so <clears throat> the key thing is that on Mac, with the SQL Server, you can do that now. Uh, I'm running SQL Server vNext on Docker container on Mac. Ah, right. So it's running. Clever. Right. So uh, it is very very easy. Let me go to uh, docs.microsoft.com mm -hmm. and uh, there's a SQL slash Linux. Or you can just remember aka.ms, SQL Linux. If you type in, it will uh, bring you to okay. this page. And uh, there is a, uh, one nice icon that says install. All right, just click it. And there are a bunch of getting started guide that we prepared before the November 16 release. Mm -hmm. so one of our, one of our efforts is this one. So not only for the installation, it also has a, what you can do for development perspective, what you can do for management, okay. what you can do for migration. If you already have, let's say, a database running on a SQL Server on Windows, mm -hmm. then uh, you need to know how I can move the database from Windows, a uh, SQL Server on Windows to SQL Server on Linux. Right. So this is very good. It, all those documents are done through a, like a step-by-step -step guide perspective, so it's really easy to follow. Okay. So same, uh, same for the installation of SQL Server. We're on the Docker. That is the, uh, the, the main topic that I, I want to do. To install SQL Server uh, a container, uh, the image, and the, the, the start uh, the container, Docker container for SQL Server Linux, it's just the running these two okay. commands. So copy, paste, and run it in your uh, the terminal. Then it will set you up. Only one thing that you need to uh, remember is that Go to preference on the Docker, uh, uh, the preference page, and make sure the memory is at least the four gigabytes. Okay. Because a SQL Server uh, container, Docker container, requires mm -hmm. a minimum four gigabytes of memory. 
So this is something that you remember. I, I got this issue yeah. at the beginning, and then uh, Docker starts with a two gigabytes memory at the beginning. So Docker's got two. So this four gig is is that's not two for Docker plus four for SQL. So oh, it's just the total. The uh, Docker total. uses four okay. gigabytes of memory and for the container. If yeah. you're on your say Surface Pro three with eight gig of RAM, you've got four gigs left for whatever you're doing. Yeah, and it's pretty you know uh, uh, the optimized okay. uh, the the solution. So. Right. Uh, I'm running this one. I'm also running parallels uh, the the, mm -hmm. the VM uh, stuff, and I never see any issue of okay. performance on my my Mac. Right, cool. Okay, so um, that's the uh, initial setup. It's just a one-time setup, and uh, now your Mac uh, book is uh, fully ready mm -hmm. for your app and database development locally, without switching back and forth between. That's other nice. OS. So you don't if you just want to test locally against SQL Server. You don't have to install SQL Server Developer Edition. You don't have to uh, install SQL Express uh, necessarily, um, have that running. You can just do this and have full-blown SQL Server yep. running only when you need it, mm -hmm. then turn it off when you're done. Right, That's so Docker cool. Container is also yeah. available for Windows as well, yeah. so you can do the same scenario right. on the Windows yep. as well. Yeah. That's, cool. a, that's pretty cool technology. I, I'm in love as well. So that's the initial setup, and now we are fully ready. So, so now we can really go into uh, the MS SQL extension mm -hmm. capability. So as, it, as you uh, saw, I already did the demo preparation for you to show the uh, how app is working. Mm -hmm. So let's clean up and start from scratch so that the, you can see the, uh, the whole end-to-end -end, uh, developer activity okay. using uh, VS Code. So, so what I'm doing is that on the editor, I opened up the uh, clean up the SQL. I'm typing in SQL. These are snippets. Mm -hmm. So, for most commonly um, uh, used actions like a drop database, create yep. database, you don't have to remember all those uh, syntax and stuff. Right. You can just uh, use SQL drop database here. Mm -hmm. Then it produces the snippet templates for you, okay. and you can uh, type in product catalog. This is the data name of the database, and uh, it just you know uh, completes your uh, template for dropping the database. Mm -hmm. Right? This one will fail because uh, we've been already using the database, and uh, if there is a connection uh, happening, then uh, uh, the the dropping database fails. It has to be like a single user mode, or right. there is no connection like that. So I added uh, uh, the comment here. You just need to uncomment it. The main reason that I uh, put it as a comment is that it's dangerous. If you if you run it and drop accidentally your database, then it's kind of a you know bad thing happens. Right. So uh, to prevent it, I just uh, intentionally put uh, this uh, alter database statement that changes your database to the single user mode mm -hmm. into as a comment. So okay. think one more time before you run it. So now I'm running it on Visual Studio Code uh, for. Uh, the audience can be like uh, the real Visual Studio Code, the developers, but the, there could be some people uh, who's coming from SQL side, mm -hmm. first time using VS Code because of MS SQL. So in VS Code, always uh, the starting point is a Control Shift P to open up the command palette mm -hmm. or F1 key. I prefer to use F1 key. So if I click uh, F1 key and type in SQL, then it shows all the commands that the MS SQL ah, extension okay. provides. Mm -hmm. um, go in a little more detail if you take a look at it. Mm, we wanted to increase the productivity and uh, in, a, in a way that which is natural to the developers. Mm -hmm. So uh, for VS Code, you just what is natural is using keyboard and using shortcuts, right? So uh, that was the design. So, so F1 and SQL, then if you take a look at correctly, just the typing two more words, it always selects exact command that you mm -hmm. need. So, we put the effort to design it at this level to increase the right. uh, the, the productivity of a developer every single inch. Right? Mm -hmm. So, so that's basically what we are doing. So let's go uh, and then uh, MS SQL connect because there is a no connection or connection definition before whatsoever. Uh, it starts with empty connection profile mm -hmm. list, and uh, it has a create connection profile. So by clicking it, it run you through like a command palette widget like a flow. So uh, it asks you a question, what is server name? It's a local host. 
and database name, I, it's optional. I can just go there and it will select the default. And uh, is your name? I'm using just SA for now. Type in the password. Now we ask you to, uh, to save the password. Okay. Now, for Mac, we save the password in uh, the keychain. So, uh, so we don't uh, leave it in the clear text in any of your file if you choose to go that route. And it's a secure, right? Mm -hmm. So for Windows, we use a secret store in the Windows version. So that is a kind of a, what we do. So if you go yes, and the profile name, let's just make it as a Docker. Okay. Okay, that will create it. So uh, I will show you one more thing. SQL Connect. If you go to SQL uh, Manage Connection Profile, there is a, a multiple subtasks that can give you more uh, uh, the uh, the actions to manage your uh, connection profile. One is the edit. Mm -hmm. One thing is, that, as you saw the, in the wizard, we just we only asked you uh, four questions: server name, database name, username, and password. Right. right. But uh, in the SQL Server connection, connection string can have uh, many more stuff, like what is a connection timeout, yeah. what is the, uh, the security setting, like encrypt uh, on or not, or the trust the server certificate all, all mm -hmm. or not. So for those kind of stuff, you can just directly go to uh, the edit menu in the connection profile management. And we added all those uh, suggestion lists for all the connection property uh, strings. Mm -hmm. so, even for the, uh, the, the seasoned uh, the, uh, the SQL developer, they may not remember all the connection profile and then right. know exactly what it does. So to help them, uh, we added uh, those one. So if you go to like uh, encrypt, then it puts the default value, suggested mm -hmm. value for okay. the encrypt uh, property. And those are kind of a uh, feature that we do. And uh, this, uh, this one is uh, saved in the user settings. It's only visible to you. Right. And uh, if you want to, uh, uh, let's say if you have like a 50 connection strings, but uh, you have to work on Mac, sometimes you have to connect from your other Windows desktop PC or uh, Linux. Mm -hmm. What you can do is that just to copy and paste it there. You don't have okay. to go the, the create connection profile wizard 50 times whenever you switch right. your machine, right? So okay. that's kind of a detail that uh, uh, we did design and implement for this one. So I just don't save it. And continue. Okay, now SQL ex execute query. It executes query and uh, delete the database. All right. So let's double check it. SQL use. SQL use. It's a use database uh, command. That first shows you what are the databases mm -hmm. in your server. Yeah. And if you want, you can switch the connection, right? So good. So we have cleaned up our demo setup. I'm just closing it. The first step is always you have to create a database. Right. And then in the database, we have to create tables to procedures that the, your application need. Uh, so I opened up uh, setup.sql and uh, doing the same thing. SQL Connect, because we have created our connection profile, now you can see that Docker shows up there, mm -hmm. right? And uh, since then, then you can just uh, click that connection profile that will just you know, make a connection to uh, your server. Okay, and now I'll execute it. Uh, by the way, I'm, instead of using shortcut, I'm using this F1, uh, the command line, uh, the command palette, mm -hmm. because it's a demo. I have a muscle memory. I just uh, quickly press the, uh, the shortcut. Okay. But if I do that, then nobody can right. uh, see what's <laughs> happening there, right? Yep. Magically, suddenly it's uh, executing and all that kind of stuff. So that's one thing that I wanted to say. And uh, by clicking it, it runs it. One thing that uh, uh, you can notice is that um, this is a message pane, and uh, there is a, a timestamp and total execution time. Mm -hmm. Whenever we execute uh, the T-SQL statement to SQL Server, what is important is the, the lapse time and then uh, the time when it was started so that the, right. we can always measure the performance of the query. And to help, if there is any issue, then by clicking the line number, you, s you see that in the editor, mm -hmm. we highlight the corresponding okay. uh, batch block, right? So you can always navigate uh, between the, the query results and editor in this way, and you, get, you don't get uh, lost. So now, 
let me show you SQL uh, use database one more time. And now you see that product yeah. catalog database is created, right? So let's make a connection. So its connection is also successful. And the second one that I'm going to do is that the setting up the temporal uh, table and stuff in the newly created database, right? So if I make a connection again, now you can see that we so only created, yeah. you have to keep connecting? It doesn't maintain the connection? Oh, it is uh, editor-based. So uh, 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 one thing that we are doing is that connection is editor session based. Uh, mm -hmm. We actually thought about which one is more preferable, like uh, you know, maintaining global session for entire VS Code. So whenever there's a new uh, editor session opens up, we just inherit the same connection mm -hmm. versus uh, uh, keep that the scope to editor based. Only one thing in SQL Server is that you can uh, open up many editor sessions with a different context. Let's mm -hmm. say uh, one editor, you're, uh, uh, you have a job database that uh, we just executed or delete uh, from table statement. And you can think you're, you're connected to your local test database, but accidentally it can happen that the, you're mm. actually connected to your production and you run it, right? So those are kind of danger. So, okay. so uh, uh, that's way, uh, the, the way that we thought. And the, as an initial start, we made it as an editor session and the connection session is kind of a, you know, at the, the same level. But uh, we have like a plan backlog item. If a user wants to right. go with a global session, uh, we want to have like a customizable option yeah. that you can set it. Okay, so instead of doing that, please, uh, you know, uh, I inherit the connection right. from the global session. So that is a, one of the backlog items. So, so those are uh, uh, the, the, the suggestions and feedback we want to get. Mm -hmm. And MS SQL extension is fully open source. So uh, you can uh, come to the, the GitHub MS SQL uh, extension uh, project page, yeah. and you can see all the issues. Yep. You can see all, all our uh, plans and suggest, and then uh, even vote what you want, all that you can do. That's okay. basically what we want to ask our uh, uh -huh. users. So one thing that uh, I want to uh, uh, you know, tell you is that we only created Docker connection profile. But if you take a look at now, it is two, right? We, what happening, what's happening is here is that whenever you make a, a connection to a database, we keep most recently used the connection uh, history mm. and put it automatically in your list. That's cool. So in the, you don't have to, uh, you know, create new connection profile from product catalog, right? Right. The, the original it was uh, just the default. We didn't specify database, but second one we automatically added as a, a the connection to product catalog database. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is a, uh, the key feature that we we added to make things much easier. So it's more like a, just a one click enter, one click enter kind of you know operation um, in that perspective. So uh, we made a connection here. So product catalog, and I'm running. We call ex that runs it. Okay, so basically this one uh, created the SQL Server database and uh, put all the data mm -hmm. in the system history, uh, sorry, history information in our database so that the, my application can use it again. So that's basically what uh, developers would do. Uh, open query or write query and execute it, and uh, that's one. So going into, I'm sorry, uh, I'm putting it here. So let's simulate what people do as a developer. So these are like a, my test script. I want to ver verify that the, the SQL statements and uh, the, so procedure my application is calling against my product catalog database okay. is actually uh, uh, good in shape. So, uh, so I have a test script. When you write the test script, if you look at it, likewise SSMS, sorry, DBO. Oh, not connected. Okay. Let me do it again. So there is a, a few seconds of delay to pull out the, uh, the schema information. Now it is working, okay. right? So mm -hmm. when, whenever you connect the first time, there's a little bit of time to 
pull down the scheme right. information to right. populate this suggestion list in IntelliSense. So now you can uh, complete your uh, query mm -hmm. using IntelliSense, and uh, then you can run your query. So now, uh, when you saw the, uh, the create database and the uh, uh, setup temporal SQL, you only saw messages, right? Because it was mm -hmm. all DDL execution, there was no result set. Now, when you actually run your uh, the business logic using SQL statement, query statement, then uh, there are data that comes out, right? right? And uh, I executed multiple select statements, so there are multiple ones. Yep. And um, one thing that is fun is that it's more than eight records, and you want to uh, work on the second uh, the result set, then you can click this one and maximize it. Okay. Right? And mm -hmm. uh, you can work on it and uh, reduce it. If you want to look at the uh, message, you can even col collapse and then uh, open or collapse the message that you don't need. And you can save those results. And Yes, exactly. So let's go to company here. I'll just maximize it. I save all. Now you see two comments, save as CSV, uh -huh. save as JSON. Okay. And uh, this one icon does the same thing. So save as JSON icon, if mm -hmm. you click it. I, company, I name it company data.json. Yes. Very nice. And uh, it produces JSON file or CSV file that, uh, that you need. Okay, so this one, uh, completes the uh, the basic demo mm -hmm. of what you can do with the Visual Studio Code for just the uh, uh, the core features like uh, you know, writing, executing, and the view the result, and this, of course the save uh, result. I will switch to let's say Windows 10. Oh, it was on hold. I'm going to show you something more interesting. What's coming? Okay. Very soon. And so uh, probably when we publish this session, uh, maybe the, the new upcoming feature may have been already released. So okay. I don't know. So this but is what's new in the extension? Yes, extension okay. in the VS Code. And uh, we are going to release in a week or two. Okay. So, so it will be uh, available. So I switched it into uh, Windows. Um, now you can believe that it runs on multi OS, right? <laughs> 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 All right, and uh, uh, let's do. I made the demo script so that I can uh, remember. So what I'm going to do here is that I will uh, get the query mm -hmm. and the, the, the result from a query uh, from the uh, company, and I want to add, simulate my apps, uh, the logic that insert one more company data uh, in the database so that I can actually see. Mm -hmm. What is the exact code that I need to write, and uh, if it works correctly, that I can uh, the, the simulate it mm -hmm. in VS Code with MSQL extension. So I'm executing query. So we have three records here, mm -hmm. right? And uh, I will save all as JSON. So company, I'm just doing it again. On Windows. Yep. Okay, now it is a three records. Okay, close it. Oh, sorry. Pick definition. And uh, what I'm going to do is that add this more. So I made it as a name, VS Toolbox, uh, address, all that. So I go here, and this is my new JSON data yeah. test data code that I can just check in into my uh, uh, project. So that's good. And then just to clean up the, the table so that, that we can see the difference very easily. Okay, so there's no data. Now, I will show you one interesting thing. You're going to add that. You're going to add that as JSON instead yep. of doing an a traditional insert exactly. statement. Exactly. Wow. I don't remember. I don't remember. So you're telling me I don't <laughs> have to remember, I don't have to retype all the field names. No. And, oh, I can just take this JSON piece exactly. and slap it into the database. Exactly. I don't believe it. I'll show you. But one thing is that 
I don't even remember exact syntax. <laughs> so what I did was that, you see, channel 9 insert from OpenJSON. It's a user-defined snippet. Okay. I copy a code from uh, a sample uh, documentation right. yeah. and pasted it here and created my own snippet. Right. What you can do is that just to go to preference, and there's a user snippets. It's mm -hmm. a VS Code feature. VS Code has so many awesome features. One of them is a user snippets. And you can just select the SQL type. Mm -hmm. Then this page uh, gets open. What you need to do is that just uh, put description. Prefix is the what will show up in your suggestion list. Yep. Okay. And your body is basically your syntax with mm -hmm. just a quotation mark. That's it. Uh, the quotes, I mean. Right? right. And then it will automatically show up in your editor as a snippet that uh, you have seen. Now, it's not done. So one thing that we need to do is that uh, declare the name. It's based on my snippet. Uh, there is a, a JSON data, which is a variable in the, uh, the, the snippet template. So I want to name it as a company, okay. uh, as a variable name. right? I did that. Then I uh, change this all variable template to uh, add company. Mm -hmm. And this is the, uh, the where I want to put the JSON uh, data in JSON format. But before that, insert into company, and then I have to put column list. This is another uh, variable in my template. I will show you quickly. Here, there's a column list. This is a variable. Okay. And, but I don't know what you can do. What are the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the list columns that you have? Now, you have pick definition. <laughs> Beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> wow. SSMS, uh -huh. SSDT didn't even have this feature, right? <laughs> now, it's not all. So I got to tell you, that's one of the coolest things I've seen all year in this show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, that is top 10 coolest things we've shown on this show. Oh, great. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> so now, company, auto completion. Name. I don't even have to, you know, type all the stuff. Oh, now if, right? you, if you invented something that would copy them in automatically without <laughs> me having to type, I'd put it number one on the list. All You're right. just gonna have to settle for top ten. That's good. Suggest it. <laughs> Great, isn't it? That's it's so awesome. easy. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know the syntax. Right. But I could finish it. Yep. Right. You don't have to go into the SQL Explorer, call it up, expand, expand, exactly. expand, look. Yep. Right in line. Yep. Fantastic. And the last one is a width. This is specific to the, uh, the JSON format. Mm -hmm. You need to provide a list with type. Oh, okay. it's here. I just, uh, oh, sorry. Copy and paste it. Copy. Paste it, right? Mm -hmm. And then I can just remove right. these guys. So this one, remove it. Remove this one. And last one, we can just uh, delete all at a time. Change all occurrence. Mm -hmm. Cool, huh? It's a Visual Studio Code uh, feature. You have to take that null out, or do you leave that? Oh, yeah, thank you. Oh, you just uh, debugged my code, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, if there is an issue, uh -huh. there is an error squiggly showing yeah, up. It yes, just tells is. you right yeah. away, oh, you have an issue. So that's how you can actually you know, notice, oh, wait a second, right. uh, Derek, you have a, a code issue. So you just did the code review. And let's go to company to JSON. Mm -hmm. What I do, control, uh, just to select all. Copy. Go here. And um, Control V to copy it, right? And then let me write. And then I will select to show you. Actually, it was executed. All right? <sighs> That's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is uh, very nice. Uh, our engineering team has done this brilliant 
uh, job, and I really uh, want to thank them, and that's great. And uh, just you know, uh, just for fun, one more thing. Uh, we, I have application, one of the recommendations from a SQL is that when you build your application, mm -hmm. instead of writing query in your application directly, create a store procedure right. for uh, layered protection and then uh, yep. manage, uh, management and use it. So if you want to debug and know what's inside of store procedure, Joban uh, built this application, so I don't even know what's inside, yeah. right? And uh, it happens every day. Now, go to that finish. Nice. Right? Right in the editor directly, yep. you can do pick definition, or go to uh, you just you know print it out mm -hmm. in your another editor, and you can debug it here. Fantastic! This is the new feature up coming up uh, in a couple of weeks. Great! So, uh, that's great. I will do one more demo okay. to before we wrap up this session. One is called the progressive rendering. I will explain it this way. Um, performance matters. It has to be fast, right? Mm -hmm. When in the tools side, when we talk about the performance, it's about response time and throughput time for query execution. Uh, so throughput time can be like uh, two hours. If you, you have a really simple query with a large data, it can take two hours. But response time means whenever there is a, uh, the first row or first set of result is ready mm -hmm. to be rendered, then it should be uh, visible to users. That's response time, right? And SQL Server Engine has the same thing. So I will uh, show you the difference between uh, what we have and uh, what we are going to release. So I'm going back to uh, the Mac one, which is running uh, the released version as of today in the uh, VS Code Marketplace. So I'm going to execute it. SQL. So it's executing. Mm -hmm. What I did was that the wait for delay in each uh, query statement, so that they kind of simulates uh, the long running query, right? And uh, throughput time is over 12 seconds. So you have to wait entire time mm -hmm. before you get that. Right. Now, take a look at the, uh, the upcoming one. So I'm executing it. See, as soon as the result is coming out, we are nice. rendering it. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, Ben in our team has uh, uh, been working on this feature, and uh, he's in the stage two. <laughs> His plan. <laughs> so stage three is coming out. That All means right. Uh, uh, when it, right now it is per result set. When result yep. set is ready, then we print out. Uh, the, in his stage three. He will do row by row. Row by row. Right. So, task exactly. That, yeah. So uh, that's nice. a, another fantastic feature that uh, we are releasing. And uh, okay. So if you're doing row by row, this is how do you how do you draw that on the screen? Do you have to continuously draw redraw the screen? You get these couple rows, then this row, then that row. Is that the way it's going to work? We need a band. <laughs> <laughs> to answer the question. Okay. It's a, to, as a PM, it's a magic. <laughs> okay. I'll be interested to see. All right. Something okay. to look forward to. <laughs> sure. All right. So that's right. A, the, the, my demo. Cool. And, Fantastic. And give me a, one more second. MSQL extension is open, open source. source. Yep. It's open source. We don't even use any of the internal system to box tracking anything. We all use the GitHub um, uh, repository mm -hmm. project, VS Code MS SQL. Okay. And then uh, if you go there, you can see full transparency of seeing all the issues. Even our internal discussion, it's not internal. Everybody, every developer is our, our team now, right? Because yeah. uh, you can join us. Uh, and then uh, you can see all that uh, one. And, uh, we also have a uh, daily build, mm -hmm. and we also have like a project plans. So even uh, you know, uh, without watching this session, you can actually see what's coming right. in two weeks. So, yep. so basically, that's an uh, extension one. And uh, everything I uh, explained today all right. is all here. We'll put up the links for all those in the yes, show notes. Yes, please. And uh, don't forget aka.ms SQL Dev. All if right. you're a SQL developer, yep. this is the page to go. Very cool. Thanks so much. <laughs> okay, very, very cool stuff. Hope you enjoyed that, and we will see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox.